Thank you once again for tuning in. Today's message is titled, Which One Will You Trust? I know it's been a while since I've recorded a message, and I'm so thankful that you are all still seeking the truth. And the reason that I'm recording this message is because of all the different books and translations that they have, and they claim to be the inspired word of God. But what they have done is try to dethrone Christ, who is God, who is the image of God, and who is our Savior. And it has also tried to dethrone the truth of the scripture text. It tells us in Joshua 1, 7 and 8, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The Lord also says, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And we are told to have this book with us and to always have it be on our minds. We are to meditate on it day and night and it is not to depart out of our mouths. But which one should we choose? Which one should we seek the Lord in? Which one should we diligently seek the Lord in? It tells us here in the book of Isaiah thirty four sixteen, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. This is the Lord speaking himself, and this indicates that all the words of the scripture text is true, and that it will come to pass. And because we believe that the scripture text is true, we should be alarmed when we see that men are publishing books, they are changing the text, they are changing the text so that they are so much more different than the one before it, so that they won't infringe upon others' copyrights. And it is a shame that men has taken the word of God and trying to place a copyright on it. How blasphemous and shameful is that? It says in 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. There are so many different translations nowadays. It says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. And the question comes to mind, Which one should you read? And there are so many different translations out today that people are confused right out of the gate. For example, they have 450 translations of English Bibles that have been written. And they are in various stages of completion. Some are completed and some are not. But the alarming thing is, is that there are so many books and what they do is they cause confusion. Even the churches today, when holding services, have the audacity to print out the scripture text on slips of paper that they hand to everyone, calling it a program, that everyone could be on the same page. The pastors do not even have the courage or the heart to tell their congregations which translations to use and which one to stick to. It seems that it's the wild, wild west, and it's anything goes, and people can do whatever they feel or think is right. No one really wants to do right, and they are confused, and it seems to be confusing, especially for a brand new believer. When you first receive Christ, which scripture text do you tell the new believer to read? And hence, we come into the area of confusion. And we know that we serve a God that is not a God of confusion, but he is God that has order about things. And he does things a certain way. And he has not changed. We are, have changed and are changing. We've only become more and more sinful and more and more corrupt. For it says in the scripture text in 1 Corinthians 4.32, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. And then as we look at verse 40 of this same chapter, it says, Let all things be done decently and in order, because we do not serve a God that is a God of confusion, but 
Believers are confused right out of the gate because of the many different corrupt translations that they have in the world today. For example, there are many believers who have the audacity to say and to think, oh, these other translations, they make understanding the scripture text easier. How blasphemous and how ignorant of one to say such a thing, because we're only able to understand the scripture text as we are led by the Holy Spirit of God. It is he that leads us into all truth and allows us to know what truth is. Now, there are some who say that there are many other different characteristics that you need in order to prove that you're saved. But the Holy Spirit is the thing that fills us and leads us into all truth because he is the spirit of truth. And as we look in the scripture text, Jesus Christ says himself, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. And this is the thing that happens, is that there are many believers that really don't believe the word of God. It says over in verse 13, of John 16, it says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he would not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath thy mind, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Now, it is the Holy Spirit that leads us into truth and allows us to know what the truth is. It says over in verse 14, 26 of John, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. It does not say, Use many books to understand what the truth of the scripture is. It does not say use many translations so that you'll have a clear understanding of what the scripture says. It does not say go and seek out every corrupt book that is not the scripture text in order to learn what the scripture is saying. It is the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth, and it is the Holy Spirit that teaches us. The scripture text is clear. I've just demonstrated that. Now, when folk tell me that they use other translations in order to understand the scripture text and to know the truth, I always say to them, it is very foolish to think that and to believe that. And then I always go a little bit further and I say, well, if you want to have a clearer understanding of the scripture and you believe in using all translations, I say, why don't you go and get that corrupt book called the Queen James Bible? Yes, there's one that they say is a translation. They say that it is a Bible. They say that it is true, but it is corrupt. It is blasphemous. It is filthy, and it is filthiness towards the God that we believe in. They have this book called the Queen James, and the reason they published it is because it is for the sodomites to use, so that when sodomites are taken in sodomy and doing those things that are all unimaginable and unmentionable to men and women, they refer to this book in order to try to change what God has already said about sin. I'm going to read a little bit from this so that you can have a clear understanding of what this says. The author of this article, David Regan, Dr. David Regan, has said, Why I'm talking, uh, What I'm talking about is a new gay Bible that was published in December 2012. The very people who put this abomination together have dubbed it the Queen James Bible. The name they have given it is based on two things. First, the text of the Bible is the King James Version as it existed in 1769. Why that date is never explained. Second, they argue that King James was a bisexual who had many gay lovers, hence the Queen James Version. This perverted Bible is not a new translation, nor is it even a new paraphrase. Again, it is the King James Version. The only thing different about it is that those who published it simply rewrote the eight verses in the Old and New Testaments that specifically condemn homosexual behavior. The Bible features a rainbow-colored cross on the cover. The colors that have been adopted as the symbol of the LGBT movement, lay, guess, lay lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. The paperback edition currently sells on Amazon.com for 
$34.95. It is a blasphemous thing that the sodomites are doing, and they are like in your face with it. They are not hiding anymore, and it is true that there are sodomites in the land, and then they're going to take the thing that God has used, the beauty, the rainbow, making promises to us, saying that he would never destroy the world in the way that he did in the flood of Noah. But these sodomites, these perverts, these ne'er-do-wells, these freakazoids have taken the good things of God and they're trying to pervert it. They have taken the scripture text and they are trying to pervert it. The author goes on saying, clothed in mystery. The background of this corrupt Bible, the Queen James, is mysterious. No publisher is identified, nor are any editors mentioned by name. On its Amazon purchase page, the author is listed as God and Jesus Christ is named as a contributor. What blasphemy? The mystery continues with the press release in December 2012 that announced the new Bible. It was signed by Reverend J. Pearson of the Holy Innocence Episcopal Church in San Francisco. Internet searches produce no information about such a person and the website of the church does not list such a person on its staff. You can see here that the Methodist and Episcopalian churches, they have the audacity, and some of the Presbyterian churches have the audacity to put sodomites in leadership positions. And they are claiming that the scripture text that we have, the King James, is incorrect when condemning sin and condemning sin of such a perversion. Moving on in the article, the misleading claim. The press release emphasizes that homosexuality was never mentioned in any English language Bible prior to 1946. Revised Standard Version. It is true that the word homosexual was not contained in any English Bible prior to 1946, but that was because the first known use of the word in the English language did not occur until 1892. The important thing is not that the English Bible says, but what the Hebrew and Greek texts have, have to say. And in both the Old and New Testaments, homosexuality is clearly mentioned in the original languages in graphic detail and is condemned. Take Leviticus 18.22, for example. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. In the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, a list of sinners is presented who shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Included in this list are the effeminate and abusers of themselves with mankind. The latter phrase is translated as homosexual in most modern translations, the NKJV, the NLT, the NIV, the ESV, and the NASV. I call the ESV the evil satanic version. I call the NIV the never inspired version and then you know it's just ridiculous how they have all these versions and then everybody seems to be making a choice to go their own way the use of the term homosexual is entirely appropriate for the greek term used is arsenokoites which according to the Thayer creek lexicon means one who lies with a male as a female the greek word is a compound one made up of two terms arsenos which means male, and koitain, which means sleep with and have sexual relations with. As one expert has put it, the literal, if not wooden, translation of the term would be male betters. Incredibly, the editor's note in the Bible say that they originally just considered deleting the eight offending verses from the Bible. They decided against the approach because it brushes the problem under the rug. Also, they felt that people would throw Revelations 22, 18 to 19 at them, which warns against editing the Bible, even though they claim that warning applies only to the book of Revelations. So they decided to leave the verses in, but to rewrite them as they put it. We wanted our Bible bulletproof from the ones shooting bullets. And this is what the sodomites are thinking. They think that they can change things in their own hearts. They think that they can go against the decree that the Lord has already put in place. But really, it is blasphemous. And it is man trying to force their perversions up on the world. And they are trying to move in there to perversions and sin comfort comfortably and it tells us as believers to not be conformed to the world and we truly can see that sodomites are in the land because they are trying to force every freakish perversion and freakish proclivity upon those who are determined to follow after the truth in the scripture text and are determined to follow the way of the lord jesus christ 
continuing on in the article, it says, the editing they proceeded to do was right out of Alice in Wonderland, declaring Leviticus 18.22 to be a horrible, outdated moral code. They rewrote it to read, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind in the temple of Molech. It is an abomination. The words in the temple of Molech were simply made up and inserted in an effort to argue that the verse is talking about sex with male prostitutes in pagan temple, temples. The Genesis 19 story concerning the Sodomites and homosexuals of Sodom and Gomorrah who demanded to have sex with the men visiting Lot is converted into a story about bullying strangers and raping them. And the New Testament reference to the story in Jude 1-7 is rewritten to condemn sex with angels. How ridiculous. And the thing is, is that people do not believe the scripture text. This is the reason why they are not alarmed by this. And those of you who claim that you can get all these different translations in order to understand the scripture text more clear and have a better understanding, run and get this book that the Sodomites use, the Queen James, and add that to your repertoire of books that you need to help you understand the scripture text. For it is the Holy Spirit that leads us into truth and that gives us the understanding of what the truth is with the scripture text. It is the thing that allow us to be able to discern right from wrong. It is the spirit that allows us to determine good from evil. Moving on in the article, Imaginative Editing, Romans 1, 26-7, which clearly condemns both lesbian and gay sex, is written off as obtuse language. What a shame. These verses are then reinterpreted to refer to women defiling themselves as with pagan dancing and the men worshiping pagan idols. Finally, in 1 Timothy 1, 9-10, there is a list of unlawful acts in modern English translation, verse 10 refers to immoral men and homosexuals. The King James refers to whoremongers and those who defile themselves with mankind. The editors of the Gay Bible changed the verse by dropping the words with mankind. You can't run from the truth and you cannot hide from the truth. And those who are doing this, they will suffer the consequences because the Lord has already spoken. As it says in there, seek ye out the book of the Lord. And then it goes on to say that the book of the Lord is the thing that is true. And those things that he has prophesied will come to fast past and they are not forcing themselves to come to fruition but they will because the lord has said concluding thoughts of the author he says the press release announcing the publication of the bible concluded with these words you can't choose your sexuality but you can choose jesus now you can choose a bible too ha what a shame Yes, people are free to choose the Jesus of their choice. Yes, you can choose the Jesus of the Sodomites. You can choose the Jesus of the world. You can choose the Jesus that is an antichrist. The Jesus that claims that he, that he is the Lord, but he is not. There are many antichrists in the world today, and people are dazed and confused, and they are going this way, that way. It is like the wild, wild west, and there is no order. Yes, people are free to choose the Jesus of their choice, but it is only the true Jesus who saves, not the false Jesus of the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses or the editors of the gay Bible who have selected a gay friendly Jesus who winks at their sin. But Jesus never specifically condemned gay sex, they always claim. He didn't have to because in his teaching about sex, he made it clear that all sex outside a marriage relationship between a man and a woman is immoral and sinful. Matthew 19, 4 to 5. The editors of the gay Bible have done exactly what the editors of the Jehovah's Witness Bible did in 1961 when they published their New World Translation. They rewrote all the verses they disagreed with. What will be next? The Adulterer's Bible? The Fornicator's Bible? Why not go all the way and just cut out all the verses that refer to sin? And this is what men are doing. And they are changing things. And they're saying, well, we have these new modern translations and such. And, you know, God is the same. And Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And he do not change. And God says we're not consumed because he changes not. And thank God that he does not change his mind about us and then destroy us after he has already promised to save us. And then it goes a little bit deeper. I was looking here and I found this other book called 
the Bible's yes to same-sex marriage. What a saying. There is no such thing as same-sex marriage because Jesus Christ has says, didn't he in the beginning create him male and female? And Christ also says, those things that God has put together, let no man put asunder. And it also says in the scripture text in the book of Genesis that a man shall leave his mother and father and he shall cleave unto his wife, which is a woman, and they shall become one flesh. Two men cannot become one flesh. It is blasphemous. Two women cannot become one flesh. It is deplorable and it is filthy and it is nasty and it is perverted and people have the audacity to call it love and receive it and say that if you look at that sideways or look at it and say it is wrong, you are hating. Yes, I love what God loves and I hate what he hates and one of the things that I do hate, truly hate, is sin. Bible translations into English. Partial Bible translations into languages of English people can be tracked back to the 7th century, including translations into Old and Middle English. More than 450 translations into English have been written. Now, it does not tell us in the scripture text, seek out all the books of the Lord and read all 450 corrupt books. It is a shame. People are confused right off the bat. And the enemy, he is laughing. The enemy, he is taking advantage of this situation and people are dazed and confused and they don't know what to do. It is a shame how people have come to believe all these things and they receive these things and they say nothing of it. It's just like, for example, you go over here and you look in the book of Acts, chapter 8, where a eunuch under Queen Candace's direction had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He had come there for the pilgrimage, and this eunuch had come to, Jew, to Jerusalem to worship for the pilgrimage because he was a Jew. Because in order for a Jew to believe at that time, he had to perform an act which was being baptized. This is the reason why Jesus was baptized, to show that the Jew had to perform an act in order to believe and to be saved. They had to perform that act, and they also had to believe as well. And then as the eunuch was reading the book, it says, in verse 29, then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his, humili in, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see, one must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in order to be saved, in order to have your sin forgiven, because you know that he died on the cross. You know that the reason he died on the cross was for your sin. You know that Christ is the only mediator between God and man. And this is what the scripture text has shown. And the eunuch was reading in the book of Isaiah because, yes, the eunuch was a Jew, reading from the book of Isaiah. A Gentile wouldn't have been reading in the book of Isaiah or going on the pilgrimage, but the Jews were at this time, and this eunuch was a Jew. It is verified that he says, see, here's water, what it hinders me from being baptized, as Jesus was. And so, this eunuch, being a Jew, was baptized. But the key verse here is, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
The thieves on the cross represent the two people in the world, those who believe and those who do not believe, those who would rather continue on with their sin and those who would rather be saved from their sin, such as the two thieves on the cross, one on the right and one on the left of Jesus Christ, and as one pit in his mouth to say to Jesus, if you're the son of God, get us down. And he was saying that because he wanted to go on and continue in the sinful life that he had. But the other thief, knowing the truth, knowing his situation, knowing that he was doomed in the situation that he was in and knowing that he should be where he was, said to him, does you not fear God? This man did not fear God. He said, we deserve to be where we are. And he turns to Jesus and he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, tomorrow you shall be with me in paradise. And as we see also, as we move further into this, we can see that these translations are corrupt because they are that much more different. Like we look at text comparison here. It says, as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Verse 36 of Acts 8. And you see here how the NIV is 57% different. The ESV is 46% different. The NAS is 62% different. And then the RSV is 43% different. NKJV, 46% different. HCSB is 64% different. And the LEB is 61% different. But then when we look at Acts chapter 8, Verse 37 specifically, it says here, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And the eunuch answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In the non-inspired version or never inspired version, this says a 100% difference. You can see here how this right here is now they've taken this book here and they've taken out of the NIV, they've taken out of the NIV, and here you can see it says 100% here, 100%, 100% is what this thing is different, it's 100% different than any of the other books, and even with this being here, and you see this evidence, it is something that should alarm you, it is something that is frightful, it is something that should get your attention, but you know, many people aren't paying attention because they do not have on the full armor of God, and they don't realize, and they don't keep in mind that the enemy is shrewd, he is wise, and he is a highly intelligent individual, and what he does, he does, and we need to protect ourselves because he is highly Highly intelligent and we are ignorant more ignorant than he is and his understanding is more broad than what we have but we have an understanding that comes from the Lord that allows us to be blessed but also the enemy is very wise and as Paul our apostle that was sent to the Gentiles has said in Ephesians chapter 6 beginning in verse 11 he says beginning in verse 10, excuse me, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And his might is the Holy Spirit that fills us with power as well. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And yes, it tells us to take these things onto ourselves and to tells us to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And because we know that our enemy is shrewd and that he is wise and that he is highly intelligent, we cannot leave things just to chance. And we must always be prepared by having on our full armor. And then it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
And this is the thing that we must be able to do because it tells us, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. You may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And as we see here that we have an enemy that has strategies and he uses wiles against us in order to try to trick us and in order to try to take over from us the truth and lead us into a way that is not right. As it says here, that ye may be able to stand in verse 11 against the wiles of the devil. When we look at that world, that word wiles, this word speaks of the enemy himself. When we look at Divine's complete expository dictionary of the Old and New Testament words, we look at methodia. So what the enemy has is a method. There is a method that he used. It denotes craft, deceit, a cunning device, a wile, and is translated wiles of error in Ephesians 414 because we have the truth of the scripture and because we have on the full armor of God it says that we henceforth be no more tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive even with the new translations they lie in wait to deceive they use cunning craftiness by publishing their own books and saying that God is not against two men sleeping together in filthiness, two women doing whatever thing can almost be not unimagined. This is what God hates is sin. And it says here that we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine or every different new book that men come out to fleece the flock by selling books for dollar amounts in order that they might add more money into their coffers and increase the size of their own bank accounts. This is what it says. It says the enemy uses wiles and people are ignorant in thinking that they have all these translations in order to understand what Jesus had said to us once. It is a shame that many believe these things and many follow after the things of the world and they give honor to men rather than to the Lord. And as we move on to the dictionary of biblical languages with Semitic domains, Greek, New Testament, we still see here that that word methodia, it it means scheming, wiles, strategies. As we look at Ephesians 6.12, it says, But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, our adversary is shrewd. He's wise. And yes, he is wicked. But you know what? We already have the victory in what Christ Jesus has done on the cross for us. And as we continue to look at these things, in the scripture, I wanted to share one other thing with you. You see over here in Psalm 12, beginning at verse 6, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. This is speaking of the Lord. It says, The psalmist is speaking of the Lord and to the Lord. He says, You, Lord, which is thou, thou meaning you, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And then verse eight is a key verse here. It says the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. And this is what we're seeing in our world today. Vile men are being exalted for publishing vile books. We are seeing vile people saying blasphemous things about the Lord and about the scripture text and the truth of the scripture text. And when we see these things, we should be put on notice. We should have on the full armor of God and be able to stand and do all that we are able to do to stand in the truth that we know that is in the scripture text. And this is the thing that people are not aware of. This is how people are dazed and confused. And this is how they're brought to a place where they have no understanding of what the truth is and they have no idea of what the truth is. If we look at text comparison of this psalm, beginning in verse 6, how it says... The words of the Lord are pure words as tried as silver, tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse seven, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What is he going to keep? He's going to keep his words. Then it says in verse eight, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. And yes, they are exalted. Now, if you look at the NIV version of this verse, verse six, for instance, it's 45% different. And verse Seven is 
78% different. And it says over here in the NIV, you, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked. How does thou shall keep them? Speaking of his scripture text, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Two, you will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked. How does the NIV get the needy? What does the needy have to do with the Lord preserving his scripture text and saying that he preserved his scripture text? And you know what? He has kept his promise and preserved his scripture text and it is the King James book. And as we see these blasphemous things taking place, people don't even notice this. In the NIV, it's talking about keeping the needy safe when in the King James Version, the Lord, God himself is speaking that he would keep his scripture text safe and that he would keep it from being destroyed. And it says the vilest men walk on every side when they're exalted. And this is what's happening today in our world. Vile men are being exalted because they are changing the scripture text. They think that they have a right to change the scripture text. You have many that get in the pulpit and they preach and they have the audacity to mention an author that published the book talking about the scripture text when they should be talking about the Lord's scripture text and encouraging people to read that instead of other men's books. If we're so ignorant that we need men to show us the way and teach us the way, then that means that we haven't placed our trust in the man Christ, who is the only mediator between God and men. And as we see here, it says more so in the book of Revelations in verse 14, it says, blessed are they that do his commandment that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Yep, there are many that love and they make a lie. And some people, when they receive the truth, it would cause them to have to cast out their lie and receive the truth because it says in the scripture text, but as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God because they also believed on him. So we received Jesus Christ. And when we received Jesus Christ, we received the truth, the way, and the life, the eternal life, the correct way, and the truth. Jesus is the definite article. He is not a truth. He is not some truth. He is not part of truth. He is not something that may be the truth. He is the truth. The, the, is the definite article. Looking at Revelations 22:21 verse 18 it says the lord is speaking himself for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So it shows you that we all as humans start off in the book of life. And then folk name are removed out of this book. Some don't care because they're living here and they think that this is it. And they're lavishing well. That's just like these uh, pastors that teach you can name and claim it. That tell you that people should be rich. That believers should be rich. Is that only here in America? What about the third world country where you have poor Christians? They are talking about there are some places that claim that they can teach people how to lay on hands and heal. Well, you know what? I always tell people that if you can lay on hands and heal, go over to the Shriners Hospital where children are missing limbs or, or or, or, or blind or go to children's hospital where a child is eight years old at one time. Maybe he was running and jumping and playing with his friends and getting dirty and skinning knees and playing in the mud and playing in the water and chasing frogs and catching bugs. That's what children like to do. Go over to children's hospital. Go over to Shriners Hospital and lay hands on one of those children who haven't had a chance to live their life and heal them up in order to see that they live a life and heal them up to see that you have the power to heal. People People are doing so many blasphemous things and it starts off with the scripture text because this is the thing that we need to refer to. It is the thing that we look towards. It is the thing that we place our trust in. It is the thing that we read daily. It is the thing that we read and it fills us with courage. It is the thing that allows us to prosper in the way that the Lord has sent us as it says in Joshua 1, 7, 8, and 9. But you know, there are many that will refuse to receive this truth because they cannot receive the truth because they don't want the truth because they are more comfortable with the lie that they have made up for themselves. This truth 
of the scripture text, many are not able to receive it because they have not the Holy Spirit of God. Because I've already demonstrated in order for one to know the truth and to be led into truth and to be able to understand the truth is via the Holy Spirit of God. If you're having a hard time understanding what the King James text says, then you need to ask yourself, do you really have the Holy Spirit of God leading, teaching, feeding, confirming for you? allowing you to discern certain spiritual aspects and things. You need to ask yourself and you need to be sure which God are you following? Which spirit are you filled with? I am filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, I have a great understanding of the truth. The Lord's secret is with me and I have been anointed by his spirit. Therefore, I have an unction from the only true potentate who is Jesus Christ. I have just shared with you and shown you that there are many corrupt translations in the world now and I have also shown you that there is one that you can trust and it is the King James Version you've trusted one God that died one time on the cross for your sins you'll live one time in this life and stand before God once will you stand before him in death and be cast into the lake of fire or will you stand in front of him in life and have eternal life with Jesus Christ because you received the scripture text that is true and you received the truth of the scripture text I do pray that the Lord will add a blessing to this message.